Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today we return back to the Sarasota region to check out their other dead mall. This is the Crossings at Siesta Key in Sarasota, Florida. This was originally an outdoor center that was enclosed in the 80s, which we'll get to in the history, but this place feels strange. It's one of the weirder indoor malls that I've walked through, but it made it unique. But I also don't think it's weird just because it feels like an indoor strip mall. There's more to it than that. So let's take a walk through this place as it just opens up for the day and see what it holds in store for us. To begin with the history, the crossings at Siesta Key would actually begin life as an outdoor shopping plaza known as the Southgate Shopping Plaza. Southgate Plaza originally opened in 1956, and it would include two supermarkets, Publix and Winn-Dixie, as well as a W.T. Grants and a Woolworths. J.C. Penney would join as an expansion to the plaza in 1961, and not much would happen after J.C. Penney joined the plaza until 1977, when W.T. Grants would close, and in November that same year, it would be replaced with a Burdines. Burdines heavily overhauled the Grants building, and would even add a partial second floor to the building, which would be used for the store. On that partial second floor, they would even include an atrium that would overlook the center of the store, and it would even feature a glass elevator. Also in 1977, J.C. Penney would relocate their store to the newly opened Sarasota Square Mall just down the road. Their space at Southgate Plaza would get converted to a Robinsons of Florida shortly after. This Robinsons location would be notable for being the first to open in an existing building, and it would be smaller than their other locations. However, Southgate Plaza would finally get partially enclosed in 1981, with the entire shopping center being fully enclosed by 1988. Southgate Plaza would now be converted to an indoor mall as such. In 1987, Robinson's would get converted to a Maison Blanche. However, in 1991, Maison Blanche sold its Southgate Plaza location along with six others on the Gulf Coast to Dillard's. The store would be converted to Dillard's shortly after. In 1994, Publix would relocate across the street into a new, larger store, and the space at Southgate Plaza would get converted into a Saks Fifth Avenue, which would open in 1996. 
Following the opening of Saks Fifth Avenue, the mall would be renovated to include more upscale shops inside, including Williams Sonoma, Ann Taylor, Banana Republic, and more. This would also be done to compete with the nearby Sarasota Square Mall down the road. However, in 2002, the Westfield Group would buy both Southgate Plaza and Sarasota Square. This property would be renamed into Westfield Shopping Town Southgate that year. However, they would drop the Shopping Town name in 2005 and go down just to Westfield Southgate. Also in 2005, Burdines would be converted into a Macy's. Now that I just mentioned Macy's a few minutes ago, I kind of want to take a walk through this location and see how it's holding up, so let's take a quick walk through here while we wrap up the history. Just like Sarasota Square, this mall would fall under the fate of UTC. In 2012, Saks Fifth Avenue announced that they would be relocating to the mall at University Town Center, the new mall opening up right by Interstate 75, and in 2014, Dillard's would announce their closure at Southgate to relocate to University Town Center just in time for that mall's opening. This would leave a huge dent in Westfield Southgate. However, Westfield wasn't going to give up right away. Shortly after Saks Fifth Avenue closed, they would convert the space into Cobb Theater's new concept, Cine Bistro. And Cine Bistro still remains in the mall as of the recording of this video. And on June 1st, 2017, the mall would be renamed to Westfield Siesta Key. That same year, Lucky's Market and LA Fitness would open up in sections of the former Dillard space. However, Lucky's Market would be short-lived, as they would close in 2020. I'll be real with y'all, this is one of the coolest escalator bays I've seen inside of a department store. In December 2020, Westfield would sell the mall to O'Connor Capital Partners. The mall would then be renamed to the crossings at Siesta Key. However, in 2022, the mall would be sold again. As of today, Benderson Development owns the property, and other than replacing the old Lucky's Market with an Aldi, not much has happened here. Today, this mall remains open with many boutique shops inside. However, most of the interior is very empty. And at this point, the future of this mall is certainly unknown. And at this point, only time will tell what will happen to this mall in the future. But judging by what happened with Sarasota Square shortly after my video was released, I believe this place is on borrowed time. Also, this atrium is really cool in the Macy's. Before we head back into the mall to wrap things up, let's take a quick ride on this glass elevator.
The crossings at Siesta Key was definitely one of the more unique malls I visited. It was a tiny mall with an interesting charm and art deco aesthetic. The mall bordered on almost being more of an indoor strip mall, but had some mall characteristics, such as a Macy's with a mall entrance. The mall had lots of cute little art exhibits and boutiques, as well as a mural of the ocean and different creatures native to Florida. Unfortunately, the fountains here were shut off, but this mall still had a lot of charm to it. It was very bright and airy and pleasant to walk around in. Definitely a perfect mall for the Siesta Key area right by the beach. Right about here is one of my closest encounters I've had with mall security where I thought I was going to get told to stop filming, but I didn't, thankfully. Okay, sounds good, thank you. <laughs> I ran into him again later on, and he was super chill. So shout out to you, man, for not kicking me out. <laughs> I just don't think he noticed that I was filming, which is a good thing. Now, I'm going to be brutally honest that aesthetically this mall just didn't do it for me. Compared to Sarasota Square, which I saw last year, Sarasota Square was a much nicer mall. Both of them look very modern, and I'll give it this. This mall does feel very open and airy, which is really nice, but the way that Sarasota Square did it was just better in my opinion. I think part of it that didn't do it for me was that I was really bummed to see that the fountains were shut off. That did suck for me, but eh, sometimes it happens. Now, give or take what you will, this footage was filmed within the first 30 minutes of the mall's operation for the day, but I feel like it probably doesn't look much better than this because sure this place does have quite a bit of boutique shops still. But we're going to get to the reason why I think this place is strange. And it's not because it is just basically an indoor strip mall. And it's not because of the stores that are in here. It's because half of the spaces here are just full of art, which isn't a bad thing. It's just this place feels less of a mall and more of an art museum. And honestly, if they want to find a great thing to use the structure for and repurpose the mall... I think this would be a great place for an art museum. Just put a bunch of art in all of the empty storefronts. You already got like half of them with art in them anyways. And that mural right by the main entrance. So it would be a great way to reuse the structure. But yeah, I will say this. If you're coming into this mall to try to avoid the heat, from what I remember walking through here, the AC wasn't working. So I don't recommend coming here to avoid the heat. But now that University Town Center is basically the only mall left in the Sarasota region, who knows what the future is with this place. But we'll just have to wait and see, considering that Sarasota Square is now gone. Which, if y'all want to see a video of University Town Center from me, I'll do one in the future if y'all want. Just leave a request. I'll try to get up here again next time I'm in Florida. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. With that being said, everyone, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe and turn on notifications as always. So more videos like this can come to more viewers like you. And follow my Instagram for more sneak peeks of future videos coming to the channel. With that being said, everyone, take care. Stay awesome. Thank you for watching. 
and have a blessed day. I will see you all in my next video.